Free College, binomial expansion. So this is an important procedure. This is a very common regions question, and, and it's often, you know, sometimes it's a part one where they just say, you know, what's the third term, and then sometimes it's a, a part three where they want you to actually expand it. So it's an important process to know. It's almost guaranteed. It will be on there. I just don't know if it's going to be a, you know, part one or a part two or three, but it will be on there in some, some way or another. So the procedure for binomial expansion is um, we, we do a, a three-column procedure. First, ignore the binomial and just focus on the exponent. The exponent gives us the first column. And so I want to just circle that. So the 5. And so I'm going to do a column that starts with 5, and then it goes 5C0, 5C1, 5C2, 5C3, 5C4 all the way down to 5C5. And so whatever your exponent is, you start with that and you start with 0, and you get it all the way until it matches with whatever that exponent is. And that's your first column. And so we're, we're going to need our calculator for, for a lot of that. Um, so let me get that ready. But while that's coming up, I'll prepare my, my next column. The next column has to do with your first term, your first expression here. All right, so my calculator is ready to go. Uh, 2x, positive 2x. And so that goes in parentheses, 2x, parentheses, 2x, parentheses, 2x, parentheses, 2x, parentheses, 2x, and parentheses, 2x. But that gets an exponent. Now, the exponent here is the opposite of our first column. Our first column, the number after c, went from 0 to 5. This one's going to go from 5 to 0. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then our third column is the second term of your binomial. Don't forget the sign. In this case, negative 1. So let's put that in parentheses. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. I guess you don't need me to say it every time, right? Uh, but this is also going to get an exponent. And it's going to be the opposite of this. And so instead of 5 to 0, it's going to go 0 to 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so there's a lot of pattern stuff happening here. You know, you start with your exponent, and you go 0 to 5. You go low to high. Your middle column, the exponent goes high to low. And then your third column again goes low to high. And so you have kind of an, you know, an up, down, up scenario happening between this, these numbers, these numbers, and these numbers. And so just always remember that you never have two next to each other that are doing the same thing. It's up, down, up. And, um, you know, one thing to point out is the previous lecture was about binomial probability, which had something like this in NCR, parentheses, exponent, parentheses, exponent. And students get them confused quite a bit because in binomial probability, this number and this number match. But obviously they don't in binomial expansion. In binomial expansion, this number and this number match. And so don't get the two confused. Um, you know, the other one's all about probability. We say the probability of success raised to the amount of success and stuff like that. But don't, don't confuse the two. They're very similar, and they're both binomial. And, you know, I, you really need to just make a conscious mental note of that right now, that when it comes to probability, your number after C and your first exponent will match. But when it comes to expansion, it's the second number that matches. So there is a, there's a key difference there. All right, so then we just need to pretty much evaluate each of these things, um, really one at a time. And now I'm going to do this one piece at a time. First, 5C0. And so you're just going to type that into your calculator. You do fath 5, uh, math, left the probability, NCR is choice 3, and 0. And the answer is going to be 1. Basically, any number C0 is 1. And so I could just kind of know that from now on. So that's 1 times... 2x to the fifth. So 2x to the fifth. I'm raising 2 to the fifth and I'm raising x to the fifth. If you don't know what 2 to the fifth is, that's okay. Again, we have our calculator. Oops, I don't need a compass. I need a calculator. 2 raised to the fifth is 32. All right, let me get rid of this compass here, unless you want to start doing constructions. Which I'm guessing you don't. Uh, so that is going to be 32. 2 to the 5th is 32, and x to the 5th is x to the 5th. Don't forget about the, the exponent gets applied to your variable also. 
And then the last part for this one is negative 1 raised to the 0. And anything raised to the 0 is positive 1. But you could also type that into your calculator. Just don't forget the parentheses around negative 1. Otherwise, it's not going to give you something accurate. This multiplies to 32x to the fifth. The times 1s don't really do much. But in all, most of these other cases, we'll have things that aren't 1. 5c1, again, type it into your calculator, but it comes out to be 5. Anything c1 is the number in front. 2x to the fourth. 2 to the fourth is 16. And x to the fourth is x to the fourth. And negative 1 to the first is negative 1. And you're going to see something happen with these negative numbers raised to exponents that whenever it's raised to an even exponent, like 2 or 4 or 6, it's going to end up positive. But anytime it's raised to an odd exponent, like 1, 3, and 5, it's going to stay negative. And that means that through multiplication, this whole thing's going to come out negative. So 5 times 16 times negative 1 is negative 80 x to the fourth. Again, for the numbers, you could multiply in your calculator if you need. All right, 5c2, again, just type it in. If you don't know, 5, math, left, probability, NCRs, choice number 3, and 2 is 10. So this is 10. 2x cubed, 2 to the third is 8. And x cubed. Getting a little bit of a delay on my, my tablet right here, so just bear with me. With the slow writing a little bit. And negative 1 squared, and this is what I was saying, is that the, the odd expression here, when it's raised to an even exponent, becomes positive. Whereas when it's raised to an odd exponent, it's going to stay negative. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. So I have 10 times 8 times positive 1 is positive 80. And I'm actually going to put a plus sign in front of it. Positive 80 x to the third. The reason why I'm putting a plus in front of it is because in the end we're going to put all this together to be a one long polynomial. I could put a plus in front of this first one, but we know that when the first thing's positive, we usually don't need that plus sign there. Okay, next row is 5c3, and that is also 10. You can type it into your calculator. You can take my word for it. 2x squared is 4x squared, and negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 10 times 4 times negative 1 is negative 40x squared. 5c4 is 5, 2x to the first is 2x, and negative 1 to the fourth. I don't know if you can hear the bell in the background, but the period just ended. Negative 1 to the fourth to an even exponent is positive 1. And so we're at 5 times 2x times 1 is positive 10x. And then the last row, 5c5 is 1. Anything to the 0, like 2x to the 0 is 1. Even, even the 0 is gone. I mean, even x is gone. The whole thing, it's not 1x, it's just 1. And all you have is negative 1 to the 5th, which is negative 1. All multiplies out to be negative 1. So then your last task here is to simply put it all together. We have a 32x to the 5th minus 80x to the 4th plus 80x to the 3rd minus 40x squared plus 10x minus 1. None of these are like terms. Do not combine anything from there. You are done. All right, real quick, I just want to do one more quick problem. It's not going to be a whole thing. It's just a specific term. So this is a case where it wants the third term in the expression. So the third term, first of all, my exponent is 3, so I know it's going to be 3c. What do you think the number over here is, though? It's actually not 3 for the third term, it's 2. Because look back here, remember we started at 0? So my first term was 0, my second term was 1, my third term was 2. It always ends up being 1 less than the term you're at. So if I wanted my fourth term, it's not 5c4, it'd be 5c3. So it's always 1 less. So my third term is 3c2. Times my first binomial expression is 2x to the fourth. And that exponent would be the opposite. Instead of going 0, 1, 2 for the third term, this would be going um, 3, 2, 1. Right? Because this would go 0, 1, 2, 3. They would end up with four terms. And this would be um, 3, 2, 1, and then 0. Um, 
but it's helpful actually when you when you're trying to do the exponents to do the second exponent first because it's going to be negative y. This is the one that we know matches our number over here. So that's your 2. And then what you could always remember is that this other exponent is the difference between the 3 and the 2 here. And so that's you know why it's 1. Again, if you look at the pattern happening over here, like if you pick a, a random row like 5c1 here, notice that the, the 1 here and your second exponent match. But 5 minus 1 is your 4 here. And so that's probably a little bit better than thinking about you know where you are in the list. So 3c2 times 2x to the fourth, the difference of 3 and 2 is 1, and negative y squared. And so you evaluate this whole thing. 3c2 is 3, math, left, ncr, 2. It's going to come out to be 3, I believe, yep. 3 times 2x to the fourth to the first is just 2x to the fourth, but if this was raised to anything like the second or third, you'd have to apply that. And negative y squared, remember an even exponent for a negative is going to make it positive y squared. And I think that was really the, the trick to this problem is, is whether or not people make this term positive or negative. But a negative raised to an even exponent makes you positive. And so multiply all this out, you have numbers of just 3 and 2, that's 6x to the 4th y squared. And so the answer is C. Sorry this video ran a little long. See you later.